Hey guys, Chris Ray here, and today I want to show you how I design my print heads. Let's get started. Okay, so in my last video about this print head, I went over the history of my design and why I made the choices that I did. I highly suggest checking it out if you haven't already, however you do not have to watch that video to understand what I'm saying in this one. Although, before I get into how it is on my print heads, I would like to take a second to explain what I've changed since that last video. If you've seen my print head in the past, then you can probably see that the most noticeable change is that it now has a fan. I spent some time figuring out the least amount of plastic that I needed in order to keep the weight down, and this is what I came up with. There are two small plastic tabs that screw onto the fan and hold it against the motor. The other large change is that I'm no longer using the quick connector that I've utilized in previous videos. I actually had two pins short and damaged my controller board due to the constant movement of the wire loom. Because of that issue, I switched to this D-sub connector. It provides a more rugged connection and can be screwed into place if need be. Now that you know what my print head looks like, let's move on to the methods behind how I designed it. When designing a print head, there are a few major things to keep in mind. First of all, it's important to have as little play as possible in the bearings connected to the print head. In my case, however, these cheap bearings are way too loose. This is one of the things I'll be correcting in my next printer, but for right now, I'll make do with these bearings and rods that I already have. It's pretty easy to see why you want good bearings. When it comes down to it, the slop in the bearings introduces vibration and movement at the nozzle, which will cause ripples in the print. The second major consideration is weight. It doesn't matter how much play is in your bearings if your print head weighs a ton. The lighter the print head, the faster it will be able to accelerate and decelerate, leading to a greater maximum print speed. I should point out that although Bowden print heads are generally the lightest, I decided to sacrifice a little weight for a direct drive system that I can print flexibles with. The direct drive also allows for more control when printing tiny parts with a 0.2mm nozzle. The third main consideration is bearing to nozzle distance. I don't hear as many people talk about this, but the closer your nozzle is to the bearing, the less distance the nozzle will be able to move. Think of your print head as a pendulum. There is no such thing as a perfect system, so even great bearings will have a tiny bit of play. Think of the top bearing as the pivot point, and the lower bearing as a set of bumpers that only allow it to swing so far. What we are really interested in is decreasing the arc length, or the distance the end of the pendulum can move. To do this, we can move the nozzle closer to the lower bearing. The fourth and last major consideration is maximum plastic flow. When plastic gets heated by the hot end, that takes energy. When increasing your flow rate, it's possible to reach a point where your heater can't provide enough energy to keep the plastic at the set temperature. This inevitably causes a temperature dip. Depending on your printer, this will result in either an error code and a pause print, or an undesired side effect such as under extrusion, poor layer adhesion, or voids in the surface of your part. When designing a print head, it's important to keep this in mind and to plan accordingly by using things like a 24 volt heater cartridge instead of the standard 12 volt. Those are the major things to keep in mind, but when I designed my print head, I had some other guidelines. Like I've already mentioned, I wanted to build a print head that could print flexibles. What I really set out to design was a print head that could print anything that I could throw at it. This meant using a direct drive and a hot end that could get to a temperature above 240 degrees Celsius. Along those same lines, I also needed a cooling fan. The biggest guideline, however, was that it had to be modular. I highly suggest that anyone looking to design their own print heads should design them in a way to be modular. This not only allows for quick swapping of heads, but also easy removal for cleaning and repair. For this particular design, it only takes two screws. Like I've mentioned earlier, my first prototype damaged my controller board. This meant that I had to get a replacement. The board that I chose runs on SmoothieWare. Not only are these boards smarter than the old ones, but they use an SD card to store the printer settings. 
This means you can make multiple print heads that each work in different ways, and you can simply switch the SD card to update the printer settings. This also adds the ability to create CNC and laser heads for your printer. Anyways guys, thanks for checking out this video. If you like this video, then make sure to hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, then make sure to get subscribed. I'm Chris Ray, and I'll see you next time.